Good morning. My name is Christine Page. I am a licensed practitioner at the Center for Spiritual Living. This month's theme for the Center of Spiritual Living is freedom. So today we're going to meditate on freedom. So if you get comfortable in your seats, freedom is the birthright of us all. Part of being free is honoring who you are. So as a reminder, remember that you are enough. You are good enough. You are pretty enough. You are smart enough. There is no mistake, no inadequacies when God created you. You've been saved by grace. You've been justified by faith and you are utterly secure with God. There is no separation. And when you were created, you were created in God's image. You would lack nothing. There are no additional edits needed. Only God can determine your worth. So let's bring our awareness to the presence. As we take this time to meditate, please get comfortable where you are. Place your palms up to receive. Begin in, by breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Slowly and surely clearing your mind, allowing each thought to disappear in every inward breath in every outward breath to come. Feel your body relax and as it settles down comfortably, relax and let the stress fall away. Feel it melting away to the nothingness where it came. Check yourself as to clear any blockages and prepare to receive angelic messages from the universe. Breathe in and release. On the next inward breath, Hold it for a few seconds and then slowly release. Release. Take another breath. Hold and release. Feel your muscles letting go of any tension. All your thoughts, they are still. There is nothing but you and your breath and universal energy glowing through you. You realize in this moment that there has been feelings and beliefs within you that have been holding you back. Holding you back from feeling content and happy all the time. Beliefs that have been holding you captive beliefs that have been limiting you from living the life that you deserve. You deserve a life filled with love, joy, and freedom. Now it's time to release all these limiting beliefs and feelings that no longer serve you. At this moment, offload all these heavy burdens that you have been holding on to. Every piece of ne negativity that you have been harboring. You know them. They no longer serve you. You are letting go of them all. Now, right now, you release them from your being. Let go. Feel yourself getting lighter. Now take a sigh of relief as you watch these limiting beliefs float away to the nothingness of where they came. The heavy burdens are gone, leaving you excited about your life. You are now empowered. You are now free.
gentle movement, moving your hands and your feet, wiggling your toes. And now take a full breath and release. Now open your eyes. Now relax and sit back and in a moment, enjoy this morning's service with today's guest minister, Reverend Laura Hallett. The title of our message today is, None Are Free Until All Are Free. Welcome. I'm Christine Page, a licensed practitioner here at the Center of Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas, where it is our mission to inspire spiritual discovery through community, connection, exploration, and celebration. This mission supports the encompassing vision of our denomination in which we envision a world that works for everyone and for all of creation. Good morning, beloved community. I'm so happy to be with you today to share some joyous news. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing our community to our newest licensed spiritual practitioner with Centers for Spiritual Living, Merlon Hart. Earlier this week, Merlon completed the final step in a years long educational and transformational journey. She is now a fully licensed spiritual practitioner in service to our CSL GLV community and to the world. When reflecting on what a practitioner is, I came across these words of Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder. Dr. Holmes writes that wholeness is a state of being complete, perfect, restored, healed. A perception of wholeness is the consciousness of healing. A perception of this wholeness is the consciousness of healing. And a practitioner is one who has developed through study and dedicated practice, a consciousness of wholeness. Greetings, I'm Marilyn Hart. For the past four years now, I've steeped my mind into the science of mind teachings. It was by far the most conscious form of realization that I've experienced up until this moment. I am so pleased and proud to have accomplished my goal, to complete the required training to be a practitioner. I am so grateful for the support I receive while walking this journey. I look forward to joining the family of qualified practitioners on staff at CSLGLV. Namaste. So we celebrate your accomplishment with you, Merlon, and we know that your path as a practitioner and service to our community and to the world is guided and blessed. So please join me in congratulating Merlon Hart. And now we're going to take a few moments to remember Reverend Connie Phelps, who peacefully made her transition on June 30th. Our tribute to Reverend Connie Phelps. There are no countries. There 
is just one family There are no colors Just one light in you and me There are no reasons We can't live in harmony As just one people In just one world You and me There is no freedom People cannot choose There is no victory If my brother has to lose There are no boundaries That mean more than being free As just one people In just one world You and me We are one people One strong heartbeat Just one spirit Shining bright within us all We are part of one another Born to love each other When it's all said and done We are one The time's upon us And the healing must be done The world around us Is calling all to act as one There are no causes Greater than the world we see We are just one people There is just one world For you and me Shining bright within us all We are part of one another, one another Born to love each other When it's all said and done We are one Take a look deep in your brother's eyes And tell me what you see I see the spirit in disguise Just smiling back at me We all must realize Think of the children Try to see it through their eyes What will we leave them If we never learn to be Just one people, just one world, you and me.
let's take a moment to consider this week's affirmation. You may wish to jot it down or take a picture of it and keep it with you as a source of inspiration throughout the week. I'll read the affirmation and then let's share in a moment of silence after which time I will give this morning's invocation. Today and every day, I choose to shine my light and to see the light of God in all I encounter. I stand on holy ground, knowing in my presence is the presence, the presence of a power that is only power. It is the very power that has created all things. It is that power that is all knowing. It is that divine energy and universal good. It is a sacred yes. It is freedom and it is everywhere present, perfectly whole and complete. God is. As I look around me, I see every magnificent being that it has created. All was made with love. My life is God's life, so I know that there is no separation. I am secure because in this, my keeper's life, I am. The same truth is for everything that God is. We are all one. So today, what I know for all is that freedom begins from within. It is that unalienable right for all. Freedom is God's will. It is loving my neighbor as thyself. I accept this truth. I spread this love and I let it be. And so it is.
to shine a light. Yeah, God needs us to shine a light as me, as you. Oh, oh use me. Oh, God, I stand for you. We're delighted to have Reverend Laura Hallett as our speaker today. Reverend Laura is a former longtime member of our community. Currently, she is the Ministerial Service Coordinator at CSL Home Office in Denver, Colorado. Reverend Laura is an author, an artist, professional educator, curriculum designer, and licensed minister with the Centers for Spiritual Living. She regularly speaks and conducts workshops, classes, and retreats for transformational spirituality. Today's message, none are free until all are free, is sure to cause each of us to pause and reflect. Please open your mind and your heart for Reverend Laura Hallett. Well, good morning, Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas. Oh, it is so good to be back here with you. I wanna thank our practitioner, Christine, Page for that amazing and beautiful introduction. She is one of my dear beloveds, and uh, as I said, it's so good to be back here with you again. I'm actually coming to you from Denver, Colorado, which is my new home. I recently, for those of you who don't know, I recently um, was offered a position at CS Centers for Spiritual Living Home Office here in Denver, Colorado. I'm a ministerial services coordinator for licensing and credentialing, and um, I'm just, I've been here now, not quite a month, just about, um, I guess about four weeks now, not quite maybe. Um, and I'm just beginning to learn the town and uh, enjoy myself in this uh, beautiful environment. I am enjoying the cooler temperatures, I have to admit. After 43 years of living in the desert, yeah, I'm enjoying these highs of 85, not, uh, you know, 115, so. So anyway, so this month here at Centers for Spiritual Living, we are our theme is Unchanged Spirituality. Um, you know, July is frequently um, the month that we talk about freedom, the month that we celebrate our freedom, the month that we focus on freedom. And uh, this year, the the freedom is showing up as as unchained spirituality. In other words, allowing ourselves to completely dive into spirituality and allow it to break us free, allow it to set us free. And so um, this is um, this is kind of an exciting time right now. We, we've got a lot going on in our country and a lot of it has to do with freedom. And it has a lot of it has to do with why some people have certain freedoms and other people don't have certain freedoms. And so I think it's, um, you know, these, these themes were planned um, last fall. And so I, I just love the divine synchronicity that happens when these themes actually match what's happening in our world. It just, it just amazes me sometimes. So the month theme is Unchained Spirituality. This week's topic is none are free until all are free. None are free until all are free. You know, our founder, Ernest Holmes, talks a lot about freedom. His, one of his most famous uh, quotes is in the first chapter of our textbook, The Science of Mind. I believe it's on page 10. It's in the first few pages of the chapter. And he, in this one, he is talking about freedom. And he says, the divine plan is one of freedom. Bondage is not God ordained. Freedom is the birthright of every living soul. And all extinct, instinctively fill this. The divine plan is one of freedom. Bondage is not God ordained. Freedom is the birthright of every living soul. And all instinctively feel this. I think we feel it. 
I don't think we always experience it. I think it's easy to um, experience it within ourselves and ignore it when it isn't happening to other people. So much has happened in the last month or so, the last, well, actually this whole year has been quite an experience. The, the, um, the things that have happened in our world are unprecedented at least in our lifetime. They may have happened before this. In fact, they did, a lot of them did happen. But right now we're experiencing things that I know for me, I haven't experienced in my lifetime. You know, this is my first pandemic I've experienced. This is my first quarantine that I've experienced. This is the first, um, this is the first time I've been so deeply affected by what is happening to uh, people of color the black and indigenous and people of color of our country. It's deeply troubling for me. And I often find myself, um, myself lost at what to do about it. There are, have been um, three songs that have mm, dictated the theme of my life this year. The first song you heard last week with my dear friends, Reverend Melissa and Reverend Z, wrote and um, performed a song called Walk by Faith. And the song's about Harriet Tubman. And the words go, walk by faith, not by sight. Moses walked in the middle of the night, step by step, she followed a voice. It wouldn't let her be, she didn't have a choice. It told her when to move and it told her when to stay. She was walking in its footsteps. She was walking in its grace. And it wasn't just her people Moses led through the night. It was anyone who's ever walked by faith and not by sight. This song so moved me that um, a year ago in February when I had my installation in St. George at the Center for Spiritual Living St. George, it was my theme song. It was the, the entire message of my, of my installation service because it moves me so deeply that when we rely on that faith that we have, when we begin to know that deep abiding connection that we have, then anything is possible, including freedom. The second song is also a song that comes from, well, it comes from a movie about Harriet Tubman called Harriet that was released you know, uh, maybe two years ago. And um, it's the, the closing song of the movie. And it's, the song is entitled, Stand Up. And the chorus goes, stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river, I hear freedom calling, calling me to answer, gonna take my people home. The third song, it's also from a movie, it came out a few years ago. Um, I believe Reverend John played this song for you in one of his services earlier this year. This song is called, This Is Me. And it's from the movie, The Greatest Showman. I'm not a stranger to the dark. Hide away, they say, we don't want your broken parts. I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars. Run away, they say, no one will love you as you are. But I won't let them put me down to dust. I know that there's a place for us, for we are glorious. When the darkest word's gonna cut me down. I'm gonna send a flood, gonna drown them out. I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. And so, as I said, these three songs have, um, they've been actually on repeat on my car. That's what I listen to in my car. To and from work, lots of times on my road trips, back and forth from Utah to Colorado, a 10 hour drive that was on repeat in my car. They have dictated so much of my life lately. 
And so as, as I was thinking about these songs and what is it about them that has moved me so much? And I began to realize that all of these songs have two things in common. The first thing is they are about people who have somehow been marginalized at the least, abused and even murdered at the worst, simply for one reason, the way they look. Simply for one reason, people have had their lives completely destroyed simply because of the way they look. And all three songs speak to this so beautifully. The second reason that they're so powerful to me is they all speak of a divine connection. They all speak of an inner knowing that leads us to the truth of our being and that actually breaks us free from any limitations, from any bounds that we might have or any bonds that we might have. Anything that anyone could ever do to us is negated through the power of that divine connection. I read a quote from Harriet Tubman that says when she crossed over the Mason-Dixon line that day that she gained her freedom, she held up her hands and she said, I looked at my hands to see if I was the same person now that I was free. I looked at my hands to see if I was the same person now that I was free. And there was such a glory that came over everything. The sun came up like gold glory shining through the trees, over the fields, and I felt like I was in heaven. I felt like I was in heaven. On the after service call last week, we were having a discussion and uh, Reverend Z brought up this idea that um, she had heard when she was in ministerial school. And one of her instructors told her that if you want to follow the science of mind, if you want to actually believe in these principles and follow these practices, you'd better get used to the paradox. You better get used to the paradox. You see, in this idea of freedom, there is a deep paradox here. We often think of freedom as being free to do whatever we want, to be on our own, to be independent, to be a single entity. And that's one aspect of it. But the truth of real freedom does not come from being alone. The truth of real freedom comes from our connection. And it begins with our connection to source. It has to begin there, for everything does. It begins by developing a deep understanding of who and what we are. And whose we are. That we are divinely connected to this infinite presence that is constantly showing itself up in a multitude of ways. One of my favorite uh, quotes of all time comes from the movie Robin Hood. And Morgan Freeman, who um, plays the um, um, Arabic man who helps set Robin free from prison, is sitting off by himself because all of the Robin and his merry men are being merry men and getting drunk. And of course, as a, as a Muslim, he does not partake of alcohol. And so a little girl walks up to him while he's sitting there. And she says to him, why did God paint you black? And Morgan Freeman looks at this little girl and he smiles and he says, because Allah loves wondrous diversity. Our creator has brought forth everything into existence, every single thing. It loves wondrous diversity. And so why should that diversity be limited to species? Why should that diversity be limited to different plants, different types of rocks? Why should that diversity not include the diversity of the human race? How can we possibly think that our divine creator would not want to see an infinite variety before it?
The second aspect of the connection was actually taught to us by Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. When he says, love thy neighbor as thyself. Love thy neighbor as, I, as thyself. It's interesting, the, the next line after that in the Bible, as he's talking on the Sermon on the Mount, the next line is, the gate is narrow and the way is straight, and few there be that follow. Love thy neighbor as thyself. And it may be very challenging at times to do that. If we cannot get to a place where we can see that true namaste, that presence of the divine in each person that we meet, each person that we encounter, each person that we don't like, then we cannot get to that divine connection within ourselves. And if we cannot get to the divine connection within ourselves, we will never have true freedom. We may think we're free. We may have some certain liberties that other people don't have. But deep within our soul, there is a longing, a calling to set everyone free. It's the only way it ever works. We can only gain our freedom through our connection, through loving God within ourselves and loving God within each other. But the way is straight and the gate is narrow and few there be that enter. So how do we do this? How do we get to this place where we can actually feel that connection within ourselves? And how do we get to that place where we can see it in other people? and honor the unique path the way it shows up. Well, not only is science of mind full of paradoxes, it's full of amazing practices. We have contemplative practices that allow us to develop that inner knowing, not an intellectual knowing. It's easy to say the words, God and I are one. It's a completely different thing to feel it in here to know it at the depth of your being and to live your life from that place. And in my experience, the only way I've found that is to find ways to be quiet and to listen and to tap into that spirit within me. Our practices like meditation and contemplation are beautiful experiences for that. The one that has helped me probably the most though is the visioning process. Because in visioning process, I'm actually asking God. I'm actually asking for information to be revealed to me. I still get quiet. I still spend some time in meditation and contemplation. But then I ask questions and I listen. And the more I did it, the more I learned to filter out those things that were my little human ego mind and the one that was real truth being revealed to me, the ones that were divine inspiration coming to my life. I've had so many instances in my life where I have heard that voice and listened to it. I heeded the call and I followed the guidance that I was given. And literally life-saving things have happened to me because of that. Life transformative things have happened to me because of that, because I learned to listen. With developing that understanding that we're all one and actually truly seeing the presence of, divine, of the divine in each one of, of, of the people that I encounter can be more challenging. Sometimes it's hard to get past uh, the behaviors of other people to know that they are the presence of the divine too. It's, it's a constant practice for me. It's a constant work to do that. And I have practices that I've learned to help me do that. 
Um, one of the practices, which I know I've talked about often on the platform at uh, our beautiful place in uh, Las Vegas there, was um, uh, it's a Buddhist practice called the Meta Meditation. And it's um, um, commonly referred to as loving kindness. And so for me, as I practice this, I um, bring to mind that person I'm having a challenge with. Even if it's not a specific person, but maybe a group of people, I'll bring to mind an image that represents that, that group of people or that person or that idea. And I bring it to mind and I just, I sit with it. And I ask questions like, what is here for me to know? What is my resistance? How am I to grow through this? And as I sit with that and get clear on that, that image that's in my mind there, I repeat the mantra that goes with the meta meditation, which is, may I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well. May I be peaceful and at ease. And may I be happy. Until I feel at peace within myself. It's worked on lots of difficult people in my life, I can tell you that right now, to do this practice and to uh, actually do it in a concentrated, dedicated way. The moment I feel any kind of ire rising up with inside of me, I will turn to this practice and bring that person, that, that thing, that situation that's irritating me into my consciousness and sit with it until I'm at peace. You know, um, Nelson Mandela wrote, for to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. For to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. This is our golden opportunity to structure our lives, to dedicate our spiritual practices, to develop our consciousness so that we live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. It's much easier to free ourselves, but we will never ever be truly free until all are free. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend Laura, for your timely message. Everybody deserves to be free. Now is the time to share our good. During these challenging times, Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas continues to offer spiritual education, opportunities for connection, support through prayer, and our Sunday and Wednesday online services. Your financial support helps us to ensure the viability of our beloved center as we navigate these unprecedented times. If you are able, we welcome your conscious giving. There are many ways your donation can reach the center. Viewers on Facebook can click the donate button below and YouTube viewers can scroll down to the contribution link. If you prefer, you can send a check payable to CSL GLV or set up an auto tithe with the office. Thank you. Now, while you are sending your gift, let's listen again to Michelle Roll as she presents her original song, That's Why I'm Here. I want to thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your service today and um, asking me to sing one of my original songs. I really appreciate it. This song is probably one of my favorite songs personally that I've ever written. It's a love song, and um, it kind of simply states what I think true love is. I hope you enjoy it. My heart. 
Thank you, Michelle, for your original song of support and love. That was very enjoyable. Thank you. And thank you for your generous gifts and support of our center. We remain committed to serving you. Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas is continuing to provide enriching services, expanding classes, and powerful connections within our community. Be sure to watch the announcements at the end of today's service for what's coming up in the weeks ahead. During this time more than ever, we have the opportunity to remember the power of prayer. Know that licensed spiritual practitioners are deeply committed to supporting you through prayer. We are here for you. Please feel free to call us. Two practitioners are providing spiritual support right now from their homes by sitting in meditation during this service. We thank Kelly Marshall and Scott Thompson for holding the high watch for each one of us today. Now is the time for prayer. Science of mind doesn't use prayer to petition God for things. Instead, we affirm God's presence in all things, everywhere, all the time. Here again is Reverend Laura to lift us up in prayer, followed by our community song, Together We Rise, after which I'll give a closing benediction. All right, so let's just take these ideas into prayer as we turn within to that place in consciousness where that all-pervading presence is so beautifully and tangibly felt. I just simply allow myself to become at peace sensing and feeling that divine presence moving through my very being. And it is from this place of connection that I speak these words today. I know that there is only one power and one presence, one divine creative force that is operating in, through, and as all of creation. And this divine force, this divine presence has been called many things throughout the ages. It shows up in many forms and many arc incarnations. But deep within my soul, I simply know it is God as spirit, as the divine. And I know that this one power and this one presence is all there is, that nothing exists outside of it, that the wholeness and the perfection of the divine is in, through, and as everything. Everything that has ever been, everything that is yet to be, all perfect emanation of the one. And this perfection shows up as wholeness, as love, as peace, as wisdom and clarity, as abundance and joy. Because I know that God is all there is, that nothing exists outside of this one, I know that I am one with it. I know that all the power and the presence of the divine is right here within my own being. It is what has created me, it is brought, what has brought me to this moment. It is that unity of consciousness that I feel deep within my soul, that I know that is operating right here and right now. And so therefore I know that I am one with that love, one with that perfection, one with that amazing joy that my life manifests itself in peace and harmony and abundance continuously. And because I know this is true for me, I know this is true for everyone else, that each of us is that perfection of the divine operating in this time, in this place. We are here to allow spirit to experience life through us, as us, in all that we are and all that we do. And so in complete realization of this power and presence manifested through all life, I speak my word now. 
I know that there is a wholeness and a perfection operating right now within my being, within the being of every person that has ever been, within the being of every person that is yet to be. There is this divine perfection having its way with us right here and right now, experiencing life as us, in us, through us, and most importantly, for us. I know that nothing exists outside of this wholeness and perfection. I know that that is the truth of all creation. And therefore I know that through this divine connection, I am free. And as I know this for me, I can know this for everyone else. That this divine synchronicity that is moving through us, that is having its way with us, is the freedom of love, of joy, of peace. And with this freedom comes abundance and harmony and perfection. I know that as I free myself by realizing this truth, I allow others to free themselves and I bring them along with me on this glorious journey of the unfoldment of our souls, the evolution of consciousness and the freedom of all life. I am so, so very grateful to know this. I'm so grateful to feel this. I'm so grateful to see it operating in the world all around me. And I simply release this word into the law, into that creative mind that always says yes, that knows no limitation, that is totally unchained and boundless. I let it go and I let it be. And so it is. Amen. The sun lights up the sky, opening our hearts to the spirit of love inside. Together we rise, God flows through you and I. Together, one in spirit, we rise, we rise. In times of struggle, we seek the Spirit of God within, receptive to our calling, we love our neighbors and our friends, relaxing in the knowing, God's grace it never ends. We gather as one people and with joyful hearts we sing, together we as the sun lights up the sky, opening our hearts to the spirit of love inside. Together we rise, God flows through you and I. Together, one in spirit, we rise, we rise. As we stay in gratitude we let spirit lead the way listening to the still small voice it's always there to say trust in God with all your heart the path ahead is clear we unite together and there's nothing for us to fear together The sun lights up the sky, opening our hearts to the spirit of love.
love inside. Together we rise. God flows through you and I. Together one in spirit, we rise, we rise. Thank you for spending time with us this morning. Know that we here at the Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas are holding you in our hearts and in our prayers. I'd like to share a quote with you. Lord, empty me of me so that I can be filled with you. Have a blessed week. <music>